That's what's going on. I hope you guys are having a good day. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and I want to say welcome, 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 welcome to the Black Financial Channel. That's theblackfinancialchannel.com. Today, we're going to talk about the rise in online gambling and how this is ruining a lot of young men. There's a big increase in the amount of gambling addiction that has come from a lot of these online gambling sites, uh, the legalization of gambling, uh, the result of the pandemic. I'm going to explain to you what's going on and uh, just give you some warning signs about how this kind of stuff can really ruin you financially. So get comfortable, buck up seatbelt. We're going to get started on the Black Financial Channel right now. Black Financial Channel, that's theblackfinancialchannel.com. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I'm your friendly neighborhood finance professor. On the Black Financial Channel, we talk about black wealth and black economics every single day, sometimes as much as 10 times a day. Our goal is to make you smarter, stronger, and more economically capable. I want to see you rich. I want to see you win. I want to see you prosper. And I also want to see your children prosper uh, because that is the B1 philosophy. So if you agree with that philosophy, uh, put a B1 in the chat. Uh, that is uh, our calling card, B1, uh, Black First. That means we put our community at the top of our priority list. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, shout out the city that you're from as you come in. <clears throat> I want to say hi to Yashika. I see you in there uh, every day, girl. So I appreciate you, Yashika. Uh, God bless you for all your support. And uh, and also, anybody that else, else wants to support the podcast, you can sh- support by sharing this video, uh, hitting the like and uh, subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, black intelligence is not popular in the media, so we're kind of fighting an uphill battle, but we could really use your help. And I believe that with your help, we can actually change the culture. And so uh, today I want to talk a little bit about something I just read about the rise in gambling addiction that has occurred since the pandemic. This is as predictable as inflation was uh, during the pandemic. Uh, During the pandemic, a lot of financial experts like myself basically saw the government literally printing money like it's going out of style, writing all these stimulus checks, giving money to people that didn't need it. Not not you and I. I'm not talking about regular people. I'm talking about, you know, even Harvard University got a check for $15 million that they didn't even ask for. So they're throwing all this money out in the economy. And we were basically saying, if you keep doing this, you're going to have an inflation problem. And surprise, surprise, a year later, we have an inflation problem. Well, another uh, issue that was sort of brewing under the surface is everybody was so caught up in what COVID was doing, they weren't thinking about all of the significant impact on mental health. They weren't talking, give me a yes or no, if you if you or someone you know suffered severe mental health effects from uh, the, the isolation of the pandemic. Give me a yes or no if you noticed that. Uh, because my wife, as a therapist, said that the amount of business in her therapy office quadrupled during the pandemic. They, she had, she has more clients than she can keep up with. And, uh, and, and this was one of those things that was happening during the pandemic that nobody really talked about. Everybody was so caught up in one illness that you caused a thousand other illnesses. Literally. I, it just, it freaked me out. It was literally the weirdest period of my life that really officially helped me think. I, I, I said, you know, I think I was born on the wrong planet because I was born on this planet called common sense. And in the planet of common sense, they also teach something called balance. Balance means that, yeah, sure, you you protect yourself from COVID, but you don't act like that's the only way people can die or that's the only way people can be hurt. You Seriously, how many people, I bet you that the number of people who have died this year from obesity-related illnesses alone probably exceeds the number of people that died during the pandemic. But y'all ain't got nothing to say about the obesity we even got people promoting obesity. Like, it's okay. People got mad at me when I said, you know, Lizzo, maybe you shouldn't tell people that it's good to be fat. Like, that's not cool. Like, you're a great singer. Like, you know, like sing. But yeah, you got to tell everybody, go get fat and drunk and, you know, all these other things. But anyway, so so let's dig into this. So, so now one of the other problems that has emerged, and I saw this, it was as plain as day, is that now you have a rise in gambling addiction amongst young men for a few reasons. Number one, you had the isolation of the pandemic. You're sitting around, you're bored, you ain't got nothing to do. You you can't go out and do things anymore. So you get online and suddenly you're you're, you're playing Robin Hood. You're on Robin Hood. They gamified Robin Hood to make the stock market into a casino. The stock market is a perfect casino if that's how you view it. If that's what you want to be as a gambling addict, the stock market will gladly support your effort to become a gambling addict. There is absolutely no question about that. 
And uh, and at the end of the day, uh, that is a, you know, a reality that has been in existence for a very long time. Uh, I remember when I was in uh, college, when a long time ago, when I was an undergrad, I sat in class next to a guy who told me that he uh, he bet so much in the stock market that he had to go to Gamblers Anonymous. This was before Robinhood. This was before the internet, actually. That tells y'all how what, what my age is. I'm not a kid. I'm a grown-ass man. I've seen a couple of things. And, uh, and literally, this guy in the 1980s and 90s had to go to Gamblers Anonymous because of because he was gunslinging in the stock market. Now, um, it does the stock market have to be a place where you become a gambling addict? No, it does not. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> I'm choking. So there are people like Warren Buffett who teach uh, very stabilized, uh, very mature methods of using the stock market as a place of wealth creation. That is another great use of the market. The stock market is a great place to build wealth on autopilot uh, if you use it that way. If you buy and hold and just you know maturely invest your assets, the stock market will make you richer than everybody in your family. Uh, this is, has been the continuous gospel of this platform. Most of our people don't listen. We listen because we're listening to rappers who are half of whom are broke, the other half going to jail, the other half got drug addictions, but y'all still listening to them and not listening to the smart people in your community. That's part of the reason why you have the same problems over and over and over again. So here is something I'm going to lay out, uh, for, but it's only for people who have common sense. If you're in this category, pull out Dr. Boyce, the finance professor, and Uncle Boyce, the uh, the, the OG. And I'm also going to pull out uh, Mr. Boyce Watkins, the husband of a therapist. Uh, give me a yes in the chat if this information can benefit you if you want to hear this. Give me a yes. I'm looking for the people that have common sense. I'm not looking for the people that are going to get easily offended. I'm not looking for the people that want to continue the dumb shit. I'm not looking for people that don't want to advance. So give me a yes in the chat. If you can, be, if this is information that you actually want to apply in a productive way. All right. So here's the deal. And this is another thing I forgot to mention this. My wife also happens to be an expert on addiction. She teaches college classes about addiction. So this is not just a guy arm waving on the internet. This is real science here. So a couple thoughts come to mind. Number one, the pandemic naturally led to gambling addiction for two reasons. One, you had a lot of isolated people who are very depressed. Depressed people tend to do things that give them these jolts of endorphins in their brains that make them feel better, right? Just like sex can be become uh, something you become addicted to. Alcohol is easy to become addicted to. Crack cocaine, you can become addicted to that. And also gambling. The four vices, <clears throat> now pay attention, ladies, if you're thinking about marrying a man, you need to look out for the four vices. And also men, you need to look out for the four vices within yourself. The four things that I paid close attention, the way I became a quote unquote successful black man, if, that, if that's what I am, I don't know what I am, uh, is I watched black men around me who failed. I looked at great people, great men, and I watched them crumble. And I said, what was the reason that they crumbled? It typically came down to four areas. The four things that would take a man down are uh, in, in, in overcommitment or over or an addiction to sex, drugs, alcohol or gambling. Those are the four things I've seen destroy men. Bill Clinton uh, went down because he, he couldn't he had to go get uh, he had to go get some, you know, some, you know, what in the in the Oval Office. Right. He could have waited till after work, but instead he needed it right there on the job. Um, drugs. Uh, I've seen many, many men go down on drugs, uh, either selling drugs or using drugs. That's why I am very anti-drug. I think that black people have to have, we should have a clear standard to say we are very much anti-drugs. You bring drugs in our community. We're going to do what the Chinese used to do. We're going to chop your damn head off because I, I really believe drugs have ruined so many of our families. Give me a yes in the chat if you've had relatives get hooked on drugs, or if you've seen somebody get killed in your family over drugs, or you've seen somebody go to prison over drugs, give me a yes. So drugs are terrible. Drugs were deliberately laid into our community to destroy us. And for some reason, we look up to artists who will openly promote, who are paid by white and Jewish owned companies to openly promote drug addiction to your community. If that ain't in a conspiracy, I don't know what is. If, if, that, ain't, if that ain't some BS, I don't know what is. And I, I personally think Y'all should be mad about that. I don't think it's like something where you should just say, well, you know, he is making money, Dr. Blake. He is a, he's a successful artist. He's successful. He thought, why is he successful? Like, like, why would you look at somebody who's trying to kill your children and call them a success? That's not a successful man to me. That's a loser. So, so at the end of the day, you got to read the writing on the wall. So I said sex, drugs, uh, alcohol. Uh, how many of you have the drunk uncle 
who uh, has been like messing up, you know, everything in the family for the last 20 or 30 years. How many of y'all got the uncle who sits in the basement and drinks all day and thinks that that's cool because that's what he thinks other men do? All right. This is not manhood. This makes you look like an irresponsible piece of shit. Seriously, I'm sorry. I Forgive me for saying this, but it's true. I've just seen it. I've seen that guy who drinks so much that he forgets to pick his kids up from school so his kids don't respect him. He passes out in the front yard so the kids, the kids are stepping over daddy like daddy drunk again. Right. That's not cool. There's nothing cool about all of that. And, and this is important because remember, this is not just an economic battle. Before you win the economic war, you must win the culture war. Before you win the economic war, you must win the culture war. And you ain't got to win the culture war in the whole black community. <clears throat> we ain't going to win that one. White folks got too much money. They're spending too much money mass promoting ridiculous behavior in your community. You're not going to win that big culture war. I'm not trying to win that one. What I'm saying is you got to win the culture war in your own family and in your own space. So when you talk about alcohol, there's a reason that alcohol was named the most dangerous drug in the world. It's because of all kinds of crazy things that happen when people get drunk. Megan the Stallion gets shot in the foot by her drunk ass boyfriend who never was taught by his daddy that you don't run around with a gun on your hip while you've been hitting the liquor bottle. You don't mix the Henny and the Glock at the same time or you'll be doing 25 years in prison and your girlfriend might get shot in her foot. That's just not cool, not smart. But we don't talk about that enough because we try, we're trying too hard to fit in. I don't want to fit into any of that. I don't want to fit into a failing culture. I don't, I'm evacuating the building. I'm walking away from anything that you think is black, that is negative, toxic, or harmful. I don't want no parts of that. Just call me a white boy. Call me, say, tell me that I'm a Klansman. Tell me I'm acting white. I don't know what you want to call me, but I don't care. I'm walking away from all of that because I don't want to see my children traumatized. I don't want to see the people I love have a worse life because I was in it. I want them their lives to be better because I was in it. So no, you're not going to hear by Dr. Boyce with the Henny in one hand and the Glock in the other that shot Dr. Alicia in the foot because he out here just tripping because he think he the man because he got a couple rap albums and, and 50 gold chains around his neck. Well, let's just see how that all plays out for you when you up in the penitentiary, bro, because this is not cool. I feel sorry for you because your father should have told you these things. Uh, and uh, and so anyway, let's let's move on. Um, and and, I, and I, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. If I seem a little triggered by it, I really am. It's because my whole life I spent time fighting against men. I remember one time I was sitting with a guy and I think he might have been a dope dealer. He kind of had that old fake fake bravado about him or whatever. We don't know what he did. I know he had a lot of money and nobody knew exactly how he got all this money. And, uh, and, and I remember he offered me a drink. And I was in Guyana. And uh, now this was not an African-American man. So we can't put this on African-American men. He was from Guyana. And he offered me a drink. And I said, nah, man, I don't, want, I don't, I don't drink. I, I'll take some water. And he said, well, you know, in Guyana, we will make fun of you if you don't drink and you're a man and you don't drink. And I, and I said, well, I make fun of you because you look ri ridiculous when you get sloppy drunk. Like, I don't want to be out here breast stinking, acting a fool, embarrassing myself and my family. So, no, pass me the water. And Shaquille O'Neal, to, to his credit, did that. He went on Drink Champs, which I don't like that show because I don't like the idea that you want to show. Like, you're, you're, like you're proud of how quickly you are destroying your liver. Like you're proud of how quickly you're pushing yourself to an early death. Why the hell do you want to be a champion at something so terrible and toxic? Why not just say, you know, I get a little drink every now and then, or I might drink a little little beer or a little wine or a little vodka or whatever every now and then. Why must you become a drink champ? Why do we think that that is tied into masculinity? That is crazy to me because you have no idea how many men get killed or end up in prison because of things they did while they were drunk. You also don't know about all the trauma that occurs in families because daddy done got drunk and came home and decided to punch everybody in the face. So that ain't cool, man. So so I just I, I remember standing up to this guy and I was like, dude, you're not going to make fun of me because I don't drink. Like, to hell with you. Get out of my face. Like, with that old fake masculinity, wearing your chains and got your chest stuck out. Oh, I know I'm a man. And then I know, I, I know, I know, I know that I'm a man because I ain't got to go around proving to nobody that, like, that I'm a man. I know I'm a man because I just am. So anyway, let me keep going. Let me get to the see. Y'all done got me triggered, man. Do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up. Share. Subscribe. This platform's actually on Spotify and also on Apple. If you want to uh, listen uh, to this podcast, just look up the Dr. Boyce Breakdown. You can find it there. Also, uh, just a reminder, I have a book out called The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power. You can get a copy on Amazon. Feel free to go to Amazon or you can go to drboycebooks.com. It's totally up to you uh, if you want to take a look at any of the books that I have. Uh, I want to make sure you guys know about that. All right. So the last uh, of the four vices. So, so I mentioned the four things that uh, can bring a man down. And this is important for any man that wants to be successful. Uh, is uh, So we mentioned sex. So sex is cool, 
But sex with too many women in too many places will get you in trouble. It'll, it'll get you a lot of diseases, a lot of uh, uh, baby mama drama, a lot of uh, terrible distractions. And you might luck out and actually get a false accusation, some sort of me too situation where you get accused of something that you did not do. So uh, drugs, bad because drugs take you out of your right mind. A man cannot be intelligent or strategic when he's high on drugs. He also is not an asset to his family. He becomes a liability because you can't love the people next to you because you're too much in love with the cocaine. Uh, the alcohol, uh, equally bad. We talked about alcohol a second ago, so I'm not going to reiterate that. The fourth one, and this is the, the topic of this conversation, is gambling. Uh, gambling uh, I remember my father, who uh, is a person who actually overcame with drug addiction. He actually was addicted to heroin when he came back from Vietnam. And uh, he, he, I remember him telling me that a gambling addiction is the worst addiction that a man can actually have. Uh, he said that, you know, and, and, and here's, my, here's my experience that corroborates my father's point. And I'm speaking on this also as a financial guy. Um, the problem with gambling addictions is that it opens that door for you to put yourself in such a depressing financial hole that literally you could work your job for the next 800 years and never get out of that hole. You know, it's th there's a reason why you hear so many suicides that occur um, when someone has a gambling addiction. Or if you watch shows like, tr like the, not Triggered, what was that show? Snapped. Shows like Snapped or American Greed, every now and then you'll see an episode about a man who was so who who murdered his wife right but he was on tv crying because his wife disappeared or whatever but he might have murdered his whole family collected the insurance money and they find out that what drove him to do these things was partly uh, a gambling addiction that put him so far in debt that the only way he was able to uh to, to to deal with it or or to confront it is to get a big check from the insurance company now i'm not saying that uh that the gambling addiction is going to make you kill anybody i'm saying that it's a horrible place to be. And uh, and the thing is, once it sucks you in, it's kind of hard to get out of it. And uh, and if you talk about really destroying your generational wealth, it, it, it it's a big destroyer. The only person I've ever seen have a gambling addiction that didn't end up in a crazy situation was Michael Jordan, maybe because he has so much money. But then again, when his father died, a lot of people wondered if there was a connection. I'm not going to make that assumption at all. I know people that know Michael Jordan, so I'm going to totally walk away from that one. But at the same time, uh, most of the time, gambling addictions put people in a financial grave. Uh, Antoine Walker, who hung out with Jordan, used to gamble like crazy. Antoine Walker made $100 million in the NBA. He ended up broke. So uh, so what is happening now is that since the pandemic, uh, there's a study, there's the article that I read uh, was in the Wall Street Journal. And they said that there has been a massive rise in gambling addictions uh, amongst young people. And they say gambling and gambling problems are surfacing amongst young young men in particular. Increasingly teenage boys say counselors, th uh, therapists, and addiction experts. They cite the rise in time spent online during the pandemic, the legalization of sports betting in a growing number of states, and the increasing presence of gambling-like elements in video games. So here's the thing. They understand the science of it all. They understand uh, a lot of video games and even the Robin Hood apps and things like that. They actually study what the casinos do to trigger certain reactions inside your brain they randomize it in a certain way so that it kicks into the gambling instinct. Uh, and even social media, if you do the research, social media is designed to be addictive. The way they, they'll have the dings and the beeps and the buzzes and they randomize the content. So you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because you don't know when you're going to see that next post that's going to give you some sort of endorphin reaction. You're, they're wait, you're looking for that post that's going to make you laugh or that that pretty girl that's going to get you excited or that or that or that that music video that, that captures your attention. So ultimately, everything has become gamified in our society. Everything around you has basically become digital crack. It has become digital crack. So some of the smartest things that people are doing now are things like social media detoxes. That's a real thing. You know, that withdrawal is, is a real thing. You know, the ability to put your phone to the side for a certain amount of time so you can regain your, 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 your sense of self, that's like a real thing. You know, and so what they're saying is that um, that for young people who haven't learned how to sort of balance and calibrate, who don't have the awareness yet, they're being sucked into these gambling addictions. They, there's so much legalization of gambling that's taking place. Uh, even companies like DraftKings, they couldn't have you know, operated online and marketed to anybody the way they do now. 
They are now marketing sports gambling inside sports arenas. That is going to destroy so many families. And what I'm going to say to you, just point blank, is when you're looking at your spouse, and unfortunately, it affects men more than women, even though women have their own their own issues and their own vices. Uh, if I'm picking, if I was a woman picking a husband, I would look very carefully at his habits. And if he has, if he has a habit, you know, too heavy of a habit, in any of those four vices, sex, drugs, alcohol, gambling, I would run as far as you can, as fast as you can, because that will destroy everything. I wrote a book in 2006 called Financial Lovemaking. And to do research on this book, I interviewed a lot of couples and talked to them about their money situations and stuff like that. And the most tragic stories that I heard were typically cases of women who found out that their husbands had some sort of addiction, whether it was drugs or gambling, that caused all the family's money to disappear. So so be really careful with these addictions. Um, I, I did this podcast to kind of warn you. And, and in fact, I'll give you some signs here from the Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic listed a list of signs and symptoms of compulsive gambling so that if you do have an issue, it's OK to have the issue. But you have to have the awareness and the commitment to, to, to get it out of your life, because if you don't, you'll find yourself in a situation that you can't get out of. I remember uh, when I was at Syracuse University and I was buying a car and the guy selling me the car was a 75-year-old man. And I remember wondering why the 75-year-old man was selling cars. And uh, I said, so how did what, what made you keep working at, even after retirement age? And he said, well, I had half a million dollars in my retirement account, but I, lo- I gave it all to the casino. And I remember thinking about how depressing it must be to be 75 years old and to know that you're so far de- you're so far in debt that you can never, ever retire. You can never, ever stop working. And at that moment, I, having that conversation with him, I remember saying to myself, I never want to end up in that situation. Like God gave me that message for a reason. I'm going to be really careful to not end up in the situation that he's in because I felt really sorry for this guy. So so just be really thoughtful about this, because when we talk about things like wealth building and all that, you got to think about things that might drain your money. And one of the things that that companies do or or or, you know, advertisers do to drain your money is they play on various emotions or addiction addictions or psychological triggers that you may have that may drive you to do things so gambling addicts those who feed the the gambling addicts to get their money they, the way they serve them fiends like the crack they're just like the crack dealers they're no different from the crack dealers because one of the things about business that's unfortunate this is the sad the dark side of capitalism is that the best customer is the customer that's addicted the customer that is an addict, there's a whole economic theory on this, actually, where the, the addicted customer has very little what they call price elasticity. That means that uh, you can literally increase the price 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, and they're going to keep buying from you, especially if, if there aren't that many other if they're in a whole lot of competition. They'll keep buying the product even if the, as the price goes up because they're addicted. Right. So uh, so here are some signs of compulsive uh, gambling addiction that you may want to look out for or you may want to look at look out for this in other people in your life. Uh, if Before I move on, do me a favor. Please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Uh, also, don't forget, in the Black Business School, we educate children as well as adults. Uh, we have a whole Black Business School for kids, and we are training your kids for you uh, live. If you want to join us, we're doing a Black Wealth Boot Camp for Children uh, starting on the 27th, where we're going to cover 15 things every Black child needs to know about money. At the end of the training, the children will be eligible to take a little exam to get a certificate that they can print out and put on their wall. So if you'd like to join us, just go to my website, boycewalkins.com. You'll see the link right there at the top. Or if you're on Instagram, you can hit the link in the bio. All right. So uh, here are some signs of compulsive gambling addictions. Uh, let's see. Number one, uh, one sign that this is according to the Mayo Clinic, uh, pre- being preoccupied with gambling, such as constantly planning gambling activities and how to get more gambling money. Uh, next, needing to gamble with increasing amounts of money to get the same thrill. So small amounts of gambling doesn't do it for you. It's the big, the big, the big win that, that gets you going. Uh, trying to control, cut back, or stopping gambling without success. Uh, next, feeling restless or irritable when you try to cut down on gambling. Uh, number five or something, I guess. Gambling to escape problems or relieve feelings of helplessness, guilt, anxiety, or depression. So this isn't just for gambling. This is really any addiction. 
because most addictions are driven on your need to escape. Uh, you know, a lot of there's a lot of depression in our community. That's why a lot of people will sit there and scroll on social media when they're depressed. Uh, there's studies that show that scrolling on social media is linked to depression. Uh, or if you look at DJ Twitch, who killed himself, if you recall, the day before DJ Twitch killed himself, he was on social media doing TikTok dances and he was doing dances every single day up until the day that he decided to kill himself. So ultimately, uh, a lot of these addictions, whether it's a social media addiction, a sex addiction, alcohol or drug or whatever, it's all driven. A lot of it's driven by that need to escape uh, some sort of sadness that you might feel in your life. Black people struggle heavily with depression and anxiety. There's a whole book called um, Black Pain written by Terry. Uh, I can't remember her last name, but Terry, I think Terry Foster, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I got her last name wrong. But there was a great book called Black Pain where she talked about all the black women that are uh, that are struggling with depression. And that depression may show itself in various forms of addiction. It could be sexual addiction. It could be a religious addiction, like I'm addicted to Jesus because Jesus is the only thing that can make me feel better. Or it could be some other form of addiction. So uh, let's, so, so women and men both have our, you know, the, our struggles in terms of things that we might do a little bit too much. Uh, next, trying to get back lost money by gambling more, chasing your losses so you lose money and you keep betting because you, you keep thinking you're going to get it back, but you never do. Uh, lying to family members or others to hide the extent of your gambling, uh, risking or losing important relationships, a job, school, or work opportunities because of gambling, or asking others to bail you out of financial troubles because you gambled your money away. They said most casual gamblers stop when losing or set a limit on how much they're willing to lose. But people with a compulsive, compulsive gambling problem are compelled to keep playing to recover their money, a pattern that becomes increasingly destructive over time. Some people may turn to theft or fraud to get gambling money. Some people with a compulsive gambling problem may have periods of remission a length of time when they gamble less or not at all. But without treatment, the remission, it usually is not permanent. Uh, so you should see a doctor uh, when, it, let's see, they said they have family, uh, family members, friends, or coworkers express concern about your gambling. If so, listen to their worries because denial is almost always a feature or of compulsive or addictive behavior. It may be difficult for you to realize that you have a problem. Causes, uh, exactly what causes someone to gamble compulsively uh, maybe, uh, let's see, they, 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 they said uh, it could be linked to uh, a combination of biological, genetic, or environmental factors. Uh, they said the risk factors for gambling addictions are mental health issues. People who gamble compulsively often have substance misuse problems, personality disorders, depression, or anxiety. Compulsive gambling may also be associated with bipolar disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, or attention deficit disorder. Age. Uh, so, so actually, when they talk about ADHD, it makes me think about all the black boys that they put on those drugs when they were young. And I feel like it opens that door for other drugs when they get older. Uh, age. Compulsive gambling is more common in younger and middle aged people. Gambling during childhood or the teenage years increases the risk of developing compulsive gambling. But compulsive gambling in the older population can be a problem also. Sex. Compulsive gambling is more common among men than women. Women who gamble typically start later in life and may become addicted more quickly. Uh, but gambling patterns among men and women have become increasingly similar. For family or friend influence. If your family members or friends have a gambling problem, the chances are greater that you will too. I remember I had a buddy whose father used to always go to the horse track and they were always at the track. And my friend uh, would go to the track with his dad all the time and they would gamble, gamble, gamble. And then one day my friend got killed and, uh, and there were people who came to me and said that they think that my friend might have been uh, you know, making money uh, the hard way, if you know what I mean, making money in the legal way. And I said, no, he would never do that. Why would my friend ever do something like that? And then I thought about that gambling addiction. I thought about had that that compulsive gambling that I saw from his father, the, the, the way it affected him. And it made me then think like maybe there was some the possibility that maybe he made some bad choices in order to get the money he needed to gamble. I don't know if that's true or not. It could be all speculation, but it did make me think and reflect honestly. So a lot of times um, the way you end up in various forms of economic slavery or doing things that are out of character or doing things that are going to get you in a bad situation typically come from, uh, you know, having some sort of financial vulnerability, right? Some sort of financial vulnerability. It may be a vulnerability in your soul. Maybe uh, because your self-esteem is low, you feel like you got to buy Gucci or buy Louis or buy Henny or whatever, or some luxury brand in order to feel better about yourself. Or maybe your financial vulnerability is that your parents never left you any wealth. They never taught you anything about economics. They did not invest for you. So you're out here in the world and you have no money. So if you don't have money, then next thing you know, you're sleeping with some fat, ugly man in order to get your rent paid. And it's making you feel worse about yourself. But, that's what you, but you're doing what you got to do. 
right? But you're not really kind of doing what you got to do, but you're doing what you feel like you you want to do or or that you kind of sort of need to do because you 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 put yourself in or somebody put you into a bad situation or to a corner. Uh, so there's some other vulnerabilities. So here they're saying that some of the vulnerabilities to compulsive gambling may be, um, you know, some things like mental health issues or uh, or influence from your friends or family, or maybe, uh, you know, or maybe you, um, let's say they're talking about personality characteristics. Uh, now, some complications of compulsive gambling uh, can have profound and long lasting consequences for your life, such as it can affect your relationships. Uh, it can cause financial problems. It can cause legal problems or imprisonment, uh, poor work performance or job loss, poor general health, suicide or suicide attempts or suicidal thoughts. So a lot of times when somebody might kill themselves, I'm always wondering where were they financially? Uh, there's one of the three key areas I imagine that will lead to a person taking their life. In a lot of cases, uh, it might be something serious financial that you can't get out of. It might be, uh, in fact, I think OJ Nicole, the OJ Nicole um, situation, I believe that that might've been linked to drugs or money or, or both. Um, and the, or or uh, something going on with your relationships, maybe like a bad marriage. You see people, uh, you know, a lot of times people when people get killed, they're killed by someone who allegedly who loved them a couple months earlier, right? Um, another area would be your health, maybe just your your physical and your mental health is going bad, obviously, right? So um, so generally speaking, you know, the reason I, I I'm sharing this with you all is because I just kind of think that an awareness of these things, I don't think I know. That having an awareness of things like addictions can protect you not just from what you do but also from what the people around you do you know there's a concept that we've talked about on this platform uh that i worked on extensively during my dissertation process which was called financial contagion financial contagion financial contagion uh one manifestation of that is that you're not just your outcomes aren't just a product of what you do your outcomes are a product of what people around you do right you know, the, the, the people around you can ruin you just as fast as you can ruin yourself. If you want to know what I'm talking about, think about how many people ended up getting 30 years in prison on a RICO charge because their boyfriend or their girlfriend was dealing drugs or they made a phone call and got wired into some sort of uh, some sort of conspiracy. Uh, you know, and, and next thing you know, they're going down to or maybe somebody got shot in the, because you're in the car and you're dating somebody who is involved in stuff that you're not you know, that you know nothing about, right? Or maybe you marry somebody who has uh, vices and is making bad choices. And next thing you know, the family finances are in the toilet because you married an idiot who is messing up your money, right? So ultimately that financial contagion means that awareness is critical for anybody that wants to get ahead. You have to have awareness of not just what you do, but awareness of what the people around you are doing. And you have to also have enough self-respect and self-esteem to protect that which you have going on. So uh, so I, I would link it, for example, to something like um, sexual promiscuity. If you are just laying down with anything with a big button and a smile, or you're laying down with any man who, who can charm you with a couple of fancy words or some alligator shoes or whatever the hell, you know, because uh, he got a little swag. Next thing you know, you're letting his infected penis go inside your body and he's in his spirit and his physics are being injected inside of you. And then next thing you know, you're carrying around all the baggage he's created in his life. Well, that to me is a self-esteem issue to some extent, because if you really value yourself, you're not going to expose yourself to things that can ruin you in that way. Or they can taint you in such a way that after you walk away from that situation, nobody else is going to want to be around you because now you're infected in more ways than one. I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not dogging anybody for their choices because I think these can apply to both men and to women. But when I learned how to value who I was and value my dreams or value my finances and value my health physically and mentally, I started learning how to say no to people. I started learning how to say, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want no parts of that. Just this month, um, there's a multimillionaire that I was that, that wanted to work with me on something, and, and I probably could have made some money. But I said, I don't like you. I don't. You, you're not good for my. You stress me out. You get on my nerves. You 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 do terrible business. I don't want to be around that. I don't want those kinds of problems. You know, and 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 so so generally, I would encourage you in those three major areas of your life that you're trying to be successful in that they're all they're all connected. Your health, your wealth, and your relationships. Keep that contagion concept in mind because it's very hard to be successful when you're surrounded by a lot of people who are determined to be unsuccessful. It's very hard for you to be uh, financially well off 
when you're surrounding yourself with people who are economically destructive. Uh, on the flip side, if you're surrounded by people who are who are doing great things and, and, and making good choices and winning on every level, then that's going to naturally elevate you. That won't make you feel like you're swimming against the stream. And it's important that black people, that we develop this awareness because you've got a lot of sick people in your community. You have a lot of sick people who are committed and addicted to very toxic, destructive habits because they haven't had the time to really think through and realize, wait a minute, if I keep doing this, this is going to kill me. And think about this. Think about how many ways society works to kill black people. Like even the food that is being served on your street is full of all kinds of toxic shit that's going to give you cancer by the time you're 65 years old. Really? Like, so how do you walk away? From it? It's hard. It takes a lot of awareness to do that. You know, and that's just the food. I'm not even talking about the violence and the music and the and the financial irresponsibility and the promotion of ignorance and, and the way people make fun of you. And I think you're acting white because you actually want to make sure your kids know how to read and have a wealth plan for them and things like that. It's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. So uh, right now, what I'm saying to you, and I'm going to end this conversation here, is I'm not preaching to people who don't want to hear it. I have no interest in trying to convince people to change their mindset. I can't do that. I'm not persuasive enough. I ain't charming enough. I ain't good looking enough. I am here to preach to the damn choir. That's it. I'm here to talk to people who get already kind of understand or want to understand more or have some respect for uh, the authority I might present as a professor and as a father and as a as an OG, as a 51-year-old black man who gives a shit. Like I'm talking to those people and saying, okay, here's what we need to look out for. Here's how our team can win. Here's how, what you can do to avoid the people out there that don't want the best for you. That's all I know how to do. I can't build bridges. I'm not very diplomatic. I lose friends every day. I tried to work on it. I tried to learn how to become a better person or whatever, but it's hard. I, sometimes I just end up being the asshole who's, who said that Lizzo shouldn't go around promoting obesity and embarrassing black women in that way. So yes, I will be public enemy number one. I'm totally okay with that. In fact, I, I came to terms with that nonsense back 25 years ago when I realized that 70% of the black men that were around me were guys I could not hang out with because you think that drinking and hoeing and smoking all day is, is, is somehow the pathway to being cool. I don't want to be cool. I want to win. I don't want to be sitting around being a victim because I done got shot by the cops. No, I'm the guy who's, who tries to prepare in advance to avoid situations where I might get shot by the cops. And that literally made me an outcast and I became very comfortable in that space. White people didn't like me because they feel like I'm too radical and black and they think black love means you hate white people and that's fine. So they they abandoned me. And then a lot of black people abandoned me. But it's OK because I'm winning and I can get up and smile every day. And I love my wife and I love my kids and I'm genuinely happy with my life. So in my mind, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Happiness is the win. Happiness is the goal. So find your bliss, find your happiness. Don't let anybody block you from that and take the strategic steps necessary to put yourself in a position where you can find that bliss. You ain't going to find it in a textbook. You ain't going to find it in a public school. You ain't going to find it on the corporate plantation. You ain't going to find it on TV. You're only going to find it when you truly search your soul, figure out who the hell you're supposed to be, and then gain the courage to be that person. That's my two cents for today. I'm done talking. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate you very, very much. Uh, if you could, please hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, subscribe. And uh, let me give you guys a stock that I actually am buying shares of. Actually, I said, I told you guys I was going to buy today, but I can't buy today because I forgot the markets are closed today. I'm going to buy it tomorrow. And the uh, ticker symbol for the stock is STEM. Uh, it's STEM Technologies, I think that's what it's called. Uh, so S-T-E-M. I did my research. I like this company. I'm going to own it, and I'm going to own it for years. So uh, long term, this looks like a stock that I think is going to do well. If you'd like to learn more about stock investing and all this other stuff, uh, feel free to go to my website, voicewalkins.com. There's free stuff there. There's low-cost stuff. Also, you can sign your kids up if you want them to join our Black Wealth Boot Camp for Children. Uh, feel free to do that. It starts tomorrow on the 27th. And so I'd love for you to uh, bring your kids along. We believe in educating our own. Uh, we believe we can do this. We do not need the public school system. We're not looking to anybody to do anything for us because we have the experts in our own community. And that's what the Black Business School is all about. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all for listening. And if you could hit the thumbs up button on your way out, I'd appreciate it. Talk to you guys later. Peace.